Once upon a time, on the beautiful planet of Terra Nova, lived a boy named Landon. When he got bored of sitting in his home, he used to wander off into the forest. One day while strolling through the forest he stumbled upon his grandpa's old cabin. His parents had told him not to go inside, but today the curiosity got better of him. Inside the cabin, he found grandpa's old book on how to build spaceships. This is so cool, he thought to himself. He always wanted to become an astronaut and explore the universe. Following the instructions from that book, Landon built a spaceship and took off into the skies. Sadly he didn't get too far. Shortly after leaving his planet, his ship collided with another ship in a giant, interstellar accident. His ship crashlanded on a desolate part of an unknown planet. The only thing around him were parts of his ship that broke off during crash. Many of the parts still burning. The poor boy started walking in search of any person or anything that can help him get home. After hours and hours of walking, Landon reached a fascinating place. To his left-hand side was a stunning view of the planet's gigantic blue moon. But more importantly, to his right, were what appeared to be some sort of structures and shining trees with small fruits on them. Landon had found food and shelter for the night. The fruits did not taste good. But Landon was starving and grateful to have found something to eat. He wondered who built these structures. And what happened to those people. And if they used to like these fruits or if they also thought these fruits tasted weird. Lost in these thoughts, Landon fell asleep. Landon woke up the next day and continued his search for a way to get back home. He hadn't gone too far before he ran into a giant creature that looked like a wasp. Before Landon could run away, the wasp said in a calming voice, Hello dear, what's a little kid like you doing so far from home? Wait, you know where my home is? Replied Landon, nervous yet hopeful. Not really, replied the wasp. But I am going to take a guess and say it's not anywhere near here. You can stay with me till you find your way home. The wasp gently picked up the boy and took him to a safer area. This place had a lot more plants and a few more kinds of fruits. This planet is in one of the busier parts of the galaxy, so we get a lot of lost travelers here. Most of them have communication devices to call back to their home planets and someone comes to pick them up in a few days. Do you have any such device with you? No, I do not. Replied Landon hopelessly. I guess you will have to talk to the praying mantis. Praying who? The boy asked, puzzled. The praying mantis. He is the high priest of the planet and one of the wisest fellows around. My friend Dragonfly will take you there. Aren't you coming with us? The boy asked the wasp. Well, young boy, wasps and praying mantises have what people call an uneasy relationship. The dragonfly intervened. But don't you worry. If you are a friend of the wasp, you are a friend of mine. I will not let any harm come to you. And so the dragonfly and the boy embarked on a journey to the monastery of the praying mantis. Together, they crossed long stretches of barren landscapes on this treacherous planet, and flew across lifeless oceans that contained nothing for miles and miles except for some remnants of a distant past. They crossed dangerous cliffs braving through storms and floods, but nothing stood in the way of their determination. They finally reached a lush jungle, filled with beautiful trees and sweet-smelling flowers. Here we are. At the mountain of life, said the dragonfly. After the great fall, this was the only place that didn't become deserted. Everything that survived the great fall took shelter here. The great fall? The boy asked, confused. Yeah. It's a long and sad story. Maybe we will talk about it some other time. We are almost there. This path will take you straight to the top, where the mantis lives, said the dragonfly before the two parted ways. When the boy reached the top of the mountain, he saw an old man standing over a disk of clouds. Hmm. An unexpected visitor. 
It's been a long time since I had one of those. Um. Pardon me sir, I am looking for the praying mantis. The boy said. I am the praying mantis, said the old man. Oh. I thought. I guess I thought you would look more like a mantis. Ha. Huh, chuckled the old man. I do look like a mantis in my original form. But when you have meditated for as long as I have, you learn a trick or two. Like shapeshifting. I took a form that may be more comfortable for you. Or would you rather talk to another giant insect? That is very kind of you, sir. This look of yours does remind me of home, said the boy gratefully. So what brings you here to see me? asked the mantis. I left my home to explore the universe. But now I don't know how to get back said the boy this is why you should always listen to your parents and not stray far from home said the mantis i have learned that the boy replied so can you help me i can't but i know someone who might said the old man taking him to a place with lots of large burning lamps and a hot spring in the center you will have to talk to the wanderer fairy she is sort of a guardian angel for lost travelers okay so where does she live asked the boy with hopeful eyes it's not that simple she used to live on this planet but no one knows where she is now legend has it that only those with a pure heart can find her i have been searching for years with no luck lamented the old man but you have spent your entire life in service of god whose heart can be purer than that asked the boy curiously the heart of a little child such as yourself the old man smiled. So what now? asked the boy. Now you take a deep breath and step into the spring. Then close your eyes and relax. After that, well, just trust your instincts and they will lead you to the fairy. As he stepped into the spring and closed his eyes, he couldn't believe or even understand what he saw. It was as if he had been transported to outer space in blink of an eye. But this wasn't a usual scenery of space either. Stars, galaxies and nebulae were twisting and twirling all around him. As his view settled, he saw brightly lit spiral clouds in front of him. These must be wormholes that our science teacher talked about. The boy thought to himself. Each wormhole leads to a different part of the universe. But how do I choose the right one? The boy asked himself. Trust your instincts. A voice in his head reminded him of the words of praying mantis. He felt particularly drawn to a blue-tinted spiral in front of him, so he chose that. Once again the colors and clouds around him started twisting and twirling, after a short while, the view settled at something he had never seen before. He found himself in the middle of most beautifully colored clouds he had ever seen. Right below. He saw a path illuminated by a streak of golden light. After he was done marveling at the elegance of the view in front of him, he decided to once again trust his instincts and follow the streak of light. The lights led him to an old but well-kept cottage that appeared to be straight out of a fairy tale. Outside the house was an old woman. Hello Landon. Aren't you the cutest little child? The woman said in a grandmotherly voice. How do you know my name? asked the boy. I am the Wanderer Fairy. I sensed you the moment you stepped into that spring. I know you want to get back home. But if I help you, you will have to do something for me. What do I have to do? Tell me. I would do anything to get back to my home, the boy replied. You need to promise me that when you get back home, you will warn the people of your planet about the Great Fall. Promise me you will never let that happen to your planet, said the fairy. The Great Fall? What is that? The dragonfly mentioned it but didn't explain what it was. Said the boy. The fairy waved her wand and suddenly the boy saw a stream of water going through a thick forest. This used to be my lovely planet, said the fairy. It used to be brimming with life, not the desolate ruin that it is today, her voice getting heavy with nostalgia. Our people had immense respect for the nature and environment. Our lives and livelihoods were centered around it. Our lands had all kinds of animals and grass and trees and fruits. 
Our rivers and lakes, oh what to say about them. They had all kinds of fish that swam and sung without fear. Said the fairy, holding back her tears. But then, we started taking it all for granted. Where once used to be pristine grasslands, we erected giant factories. The factories weren't bad themselves. They produced goods and created jobs and helped improve our lives. But then some of us got greedy. Instead of recycling the waste, factories started dumping it in water. Slowly the water became undrinkable for us and unlivable for the fish. But this was only the start of the Great Fall. Next came the air. The same factories that polluted our rivers also pumped toxic chemicals in the air. Soon enough, the air became so polluted that it became hard to breathe. With polluted air and polluted water, the life on land too, began to collapse. The grass dried up first. Then the plants. Then the trees shed their leaves for one last time. Never to grow back again. Then, many animals went extinct. Entire continents that were once brimming with life turned into barren deserts. With nothing to drink, nothing to eat, and even not much air left to breathe, most fairies also didn't survive. I and a few other fairies managed to leave. As for the rest, I don't like to think about what happened to them. An entire civilization lost forever. Some insects did survive and adapt, I have heard. It is their planet now. We can never return. And I don't think we deserve to. That, my child, is the tragic tale of the great fall of fairyland. Said the wanderer fairy. Almost breaking into tears this time. Promise me. Promise me that if I help you go back to your home, you will warn your people about the dangers of greed and importance of preserving the environment. Promise me that you will not let another planet see the destruction my planet saw. I promise, said the young boy. Moved by the fairy's words. Very well then, said the fairy. I am teleporting you to the nearby human planet of Adena. From there, it shouldn't be hard to get a spaceship ride back to Terra Nova. Goodbye my child, and good luck. With those final words, Fairy waved her wand again and the kid found himself in a lush green valley of Adena. Just in time to catch a spaceship in the sky that was about to land. As the spaceship landed, the boy boarded it, got home, and delivered the fairy's message to all people of his planet. The people, moved by the boy's story stopped all polluting activities and lived happily ever after.